Firebase C is the map that really lets us explore the character of Samantha Maxis to an extent that we never ever have before. D Machina was really introducing people to the Dark Ether storyline, which, you know, as I've said in the past, only exists because of everything that had gone before, but it now has a whole new trajectory, and Firebase C is the one that really makes it explode. What I love about Firebase C is that it's set in Vietnam. In this all-new experience, we've broken the map up into two locations. The Firebase, which is the facility where scientists and soldiers do experiments and mine the dark ether. And then we have the village, that's where the scientists sleep and do all their research. My team's reached the village. The way you play in D Machina might not necessarily translate over to Firebase C. The low-end level design of Outpost 25 calls back a little bit to Moon in that you start in the village and then take a teleporter over to the outpost itself. Once you're at the outpost, there's a bit of a, a central area, a hub, if you will, that players can choose what path they want to go to. They can run around the outside of the map itself and the outer edge. You know, working on a Zombies map is a very interesting experience. I've been working on Zombies maps since Call of Duty World at War. A lot of the way we do the sound design for these maps is still kind of rooted in how we did it back then. It's very seat of your pants, wild and crazy. Let's try and make this stuff sound really cool, scary, creepy. Nothing's off the table when it comes to zombie sound design because of the world that they inhabit. So Outpost 25 is an Omega Outpost and they're doing a lot of uh, science experiments. There's a lot of different little things and mechanics that you can interact with. It'll be up to players to kind of discover how they work and how to make use of them. I'm most excited for players to experience in these uh, assault rounds. It's a, it's a very different way of playing than you're used to. It follows more of like the, the holdout style of gameplay, but it's not so static. You, you still have to move around. Artillery strike and napalm strike start to become key at the higher rounds, especially in the assault rounds, because it's just excellent crowd control on top of just being super epic. Standing at an elevated position, kind of looking down at the defense lines while these artillery strikes are just just bombarding the play space, it's, it's awesome. When we got together to try to brainstorm ideas for new enemies, you know, there's lots of different ideas that, that came about. You know, the one we kind of gravitated towards was, was this idea of the ambush style enemy. Now the mimic is tricky. Sky hides out as items and as you approach them, transforms into this tentacled beast that grabs you, you know, suck you in, bite you. Basically, if you see something sitting around and wonder why nobody picked it up, it, why is that awesome item still sitting there? It's probably a mimic. The RAI K84, or as we like to call it, the Ray K, uh, is based on an old Russian prototype on a weapon that never saw the light of day. It's built using parts from an AK-74 married with experimental technology. Max's contact will help us infiltrate. Wrap it off, are you there? Finally, there is little time to waste. When we started this Dark Ether story, it was it was kind of daunting in some ways because, you know, uh, a lot of us have been working on zombies since the beginning, and that's where the excitement, particularly with this fresh start and the Dark Ether story, has been kind of reinvigorating for the team. I don't think I've ever felt as excited about post-launch seasons of content as I do this year. I think people are probably, when they get to the end of this, they're going to look back at what we've done and go, I did not see that coming. If any harm comes to her, I will kill you myself.